In this video, we are going to have a look at how to onboard Windows 11 devices onto the Defender for Endpoint service by using Intune automatically. So first things first, we need to have the license for Defender for Endpoint in the first place for this service to be functioning. So according to Microsoft, there are two types of plans for Defender for Endpoint. So as you can see over here in the box that we have, so Defender for Endpoint plan one and plan two. So those are the two plans that we have. They are available as a standalone plan, so as an add-on which you can purchase, or it comes as part of the M365, E3 and E5 SKU as well. So the Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 is included in the M365 E3 and Defender for Plan 2 is available in the 365 E5 SKU. So if you have one of those E3 or E5, you are set for what we are about to cover in this particular video. If not, you need to have a Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 at least as an add-on. So first things first, license to be sorted. So in order to check, we need to go back to the admin center that we have. So go back to your admin center, admin.microsoft.com. Go into billing, go into licenses and see what kind of license you have. So for me, I have Microsoft 365 E5 without the Teams. So the E5 comes with Defender for Endpoint Plan 2. Plan 1 is all you need as, as a basic uh, license requirement for this function to be enabled. So once we sort out the license, the next step is to connect the Defender for Endpoint service with Intune. So by default, they are not connected. They are two different services completely separate with no sharing at all. So in order to connect the services, we need to head down to our Intune portal. So intune.microsoft.com. We go into Endpoint Security. We come all the way down where it says Setup on the left-hand side. And under Setup, you have Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Click on that one. And by default over here in the first block where it says connection status available, out of the box it will be set to unavailable because there is no connection between the two services. So once we have sorted out the license in the tenant, the next step is to connect these two endpoints. So for that, we come all the way down. So just scroll down the page that you have, come down and click on the option that says open the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Admin Console. So that's one way of opening it. Or you can go to security.microsoft.com and then it also brings up this particular page. So either way, you land in the security.microsoft.com admin center. So on the left hand side, you scroll all the way down until you see settings. It is pretty much towards the end. Click on settings and you get a few options for your settings depending upon the service. The one that we are looking at is endpoints. So click on endpoints and select advanced features. Wait for it to load. And once the page loads, you have a lot of options to be turned on and turned off. The one that we are looking at is pretty much towards the end. It says Microsoft Intune Connection. So this is what we are looking at and it should be set to on. So as it says, it enables sharing of device information and enhanced policy enforcement. So we need this particular sharing between the two services or the connectivity between the two services to pass the information back and forth. So we need to set this to on. So if it is set to off, slide it back to on and click on save preferences. Once the preferences has been saved, head back to the Intune portal, refresh this particular page with an endpoint security. So we go back to endpoint security under setup Microsoft Defender for endpoint. Wait for this connection status to be available. So you can use the refresh button to see whether the connection status has changed once you have made the change in the Defender portal. Once it is set to available, we are good to go to the third step, which is to configure an EDR policy with an Intune. So for that, we again head back to Endpoint Security and within the Manage section, we have Endpoint Detection and Response. So click on that one. So here we need to create a policy which tells the Windows 11 machines where to point to and where to send the data. So it is pretty much connecting the two endpoints. So you're saying my Defender Portal service has been connected to Intune and now I'm instructing the devices to send the data from your machine into the Intune service and to the Defender service and it keeps sharing the information back and forth. So for that, as you can see over screen, it says zero as onboarded devices and one not onboarded. So I have one machine in this particular tenant. So if you go into devices, just to verify, go into Windows, I have one machine Cloudific-PC, it is managed by Intune, it is a corporate machine and it's compliant, it's a Windows machine, but it is still not enrolled into the Defender for Endpoint service. 
So for that, we need to go back into endpoint service, endpoint security, and within that endpoint detection and response. And rightly so, that particular one machine is not onboarded. In order to get that machine onboarded, we need to create a policy and we select Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows Server as the platform, the first option. And we select the profile as endpoint detection and response. We click on create, wait for it to load, and we say, okay, endpoint detection and response policy. Uh, you could say for Windows. Let's copy that and let's just paste it and click on next. There's only a couple of options that we need to select over here within the endpoint uh, page, Defender for Endpoint. So the first one is Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Client Configuration Package Type. So how do you kind of onboard the machine into the service? So we have a couple of options over here. The first one is not configured. Then we have onboard and offboard. So if you select onboard, then you have to give the package uh, details as to how to onboard the particular machine. So what we need is auto from connector. And this particular auto from connector will only be available once we have the two services hooked up. So once they start sharing the information, this auto from connector option will be visible over here. And that is what we need. So once you select that, the onboarding blob information is all pre-filled. So it is automatically generated and managed by the service. So you don't have to do anything once we set up the connectivity between the two endpoints. So we select the auto from connector and SAML sharing, we can select all. So by, by default, it kind of shares all the information back and forth. The third option, telemetry reporting frequency, that's a deprecated one. So let's just set it to not configured and click on next. Scope tags are completely optional. Uh, let's click on next. And over here within assignments, you can select all the users or all the devices, or you can select predefined groups that you have in your environment. So if you search for the groups, so you have all users, all devices, you have your own groups that you have pre-created. Say for example, in my case in June POC. Now, let me select all devices. If you select all users, the users have to log into the machine for the policy to take effect for it to onboard into the service. So let's select all devices and they are all included and click on next. And it gives you a summary of what we have done so far. So the basics, uh, the policy name, there's no tax, Assignment is for all devices, and these are the settings that we have defined. So we are using the connectivity between the services, which kind of manages the onboarding blob as well, and we are sharing all the information back and forth. And click on Save for the policy to be created. And now the policy has been created. As you can see, click on the Refresh button. It will list the policy for you. So the one that we have over here is EDR policy for Windows. It's a type endpoint detection and response. It has been assigned and it is targeting Windows 10 and later machines. So once the policy is created, we can force the settings uh, between the machine and, and the platform by using the sync option. So you, we head back to Intune, we go into devices, we go into Windows because we are targeting a Windows machine. We pick the machine that we want to test on and we use the sync option to kind of force the sync. So it says Intune will attempt to check in with the device and if the check-in is successful, it will sync the current actions or policies to the device. So this is like GP update slash force that we are familiar in the Active Directory world. Let's click on yes. So this triggers a sync from the Intune platform end onto the device. We can do the same in reverse from the device itself. So we go back into the device. We'll click on the Windows and settings. And let's click on accounts and access work or school. Pick the Entra ID option that we have and the info button. And we can use the sync button over here to sync the information back and forth. So we are triggering the sync from the device and trying to connect with the Intune backend and try to pull down all the policies and settings that this particular machine might need. Let's wait for the sync to complete and come back and see as to what has happened. After syncing the policy back and forth from the Intune portal and from the end device, and after about 30 minutes, the machine was onboarded into the Defender for Endpoint. Um, it's not about 30 minutes that it takes that long for the onboard process to happen, but it's just the backend portal gets updated. And there's a bit of a lag. So it takes a while for the portal to be updated. So in order to find if your, port, if your machine has been onboarded to the service, you head back to the Defender portal. Uh, so this is the 
Defender for Endpoint portal that we have. We Within Assets, on the left-hand side, we click on Devices, wait for the page to load, and you should have your machine listed over there if the machine has been onboarded. So there it is, Cloudific-PC, that's my machine. AID joined or Entra ID joined, that's the device ID. Risk level is unknown. It's a Windows 11 machine, patch level is 23H2, and the health sensors uh, is active. So if you click on that one, you get a bit more information regarding the device once it's fully uh, given the data back into the platform. So OS versions, uh, IP addresses information, uh, onboarding status, it, it says clearly that the machine has been onboarded, device IDs, endpoint DLP status, so those are different, it's been disabled. It's a valid user. Now, if you look at the security recommendations, you can see whether it is missing any patches, nothing at the moment. Inventories should show all the software, so it's still getting populated. So once you have the machine fully reconciled back into the platform, you should have a lot of information regarding the device, like the patch levels, the software that's been installed, any missing KBs that you have, any security policies, any vulnerabilities that you have within the machine. So it gives you a full end-to-end -end information regarding the security posture of the machine. So back to overview. So it's getting, it's taking a bit of time to load all the data, but in order to find all this information, you head back into the Defender portal. Within assets on the left-hand side, you click on devices and wait for the page to load, pick the device, and then you can see how things are looking. Now, this is not the only way by which we can onboard the machine into the Defender for Endpoint service. Let's look at a couple of other ways by which we can do that. Intune for sure is the easiest way if it is an Entry ID join machine. Now, let's head back to the Defender portal. And again, within, <clears throat> within the left-hand side, let's go into the Advanced Settings, Settings, and go into Endpoints. And let's scroll down all the way. And within Device Management, let's click on Onboarding. Now here, it clearly says, you know, the operating system that we are picking up is Windows 10 and 11. First device onboarded, completed. So that's our one device that we have done so far. Now, deployment method gives you further options by which you can configure. So the first one is a local script, and it says it's up to for 10 devices. So for a local small shop, you could use a local script and onboard the machine. What you could do is select local script, download the package. I have already downloaded the package. It's in this particular folder within downloads. So this is the zip folder I have extracted, and this is the file. So it's a script that we can run from the command prompt. So what it could do is go into terminal, wait for it to open up, and go into that particular location, which is within the downloads folder. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's navigate into that. And if you DIR, it should show the CMD script that you have, and you can just run it from there, just like that. And that will onboard the machine into the service. So that's a manual way of doing it, up to 10 devices. Now let's go back and see what other options we have. The second one that we have is group policy. So this is for the machines that is somehow connected to the on-prem active directory. So you can have a group policy in place. It will give you the onboarding package. You can push it out using group policies, and it's fully documented by Microsoft. Third option that we have is SCCM, which is renamed as Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. We could do that again. The machine could be co-managed or it could be completely managed in the on-prem world. The fourth one is the MDM option, which is Microsoft Intune in our case. And the fifth one is a VDI onboarding script for non-persistent devices. So we, we quite have a varied way of onboarding the machines into the service. The one that we have gone for is the Intune, which is pretty easy. Now, just to recap what we have done. So first of all, in order to onboard the machine using Intune into the endpoint Defender service, we need to sort out the license first of all. So you should either have an E3 or E5 M365 SKU, or you should have a Defender for endpoint plan one or plan two as an add-on. Um, you could look at uh, any other partners to get the up-to-date information regarding the licensing options for these but you should have some form of Defender for Endpoint license, in short. Once we have the licensing sorted, second one is we need to connect the two services together. So the Defender for Endpoint service need to be connected with Microsoft Intune. And we do that by going into the Intune portal, going into the, into the Endpoint security, and we go into Defender for Endpoint. And again, you can see the status. If it is unavailable, we click the Defender for Endpoint admin console, come in over here, go back into settings and endpoints, 
advanced features and you select the toggle to on to connect the two endpoints the one that we are looking for is microsoft intune connection the one we have here so once the two connections are made then we create an edr policy which kind of says what needs to be done and what needs to be enabled and the method of onboarding so in our case once the services are lit up between the two endpoints we go for the auto from connector option push the policy out and that starts the onboarding process into the service that we have and to kind of check whether things have been working as expected we come back into the defender portal we go into the asset section on the left hand side and we click on devices wait for the list to load and see whether your machine is appearing over there and if it is then wait for some time by which time you will have more options regarding the windows machine that you have you will have a detailed information regarding the security posture the patch levels any missing kbs all of that sort and you can also check the onboarding status over here so you have the machine name over here and towards the end onboarding status it says it has been onboarded it gives you a date and time so it gives you the full information so this is how you onboard a windows machine to the defender for endpoint service by using intune and we also saw that we have few other ways of doing that as well like local scripts and group policies and accm and vdi scripts if this video has been informative Please do check the other videos that I have in the channel. I upload videos around Microsoft 365, Azure, Intune, Windows PowerShell, and general IT stuff on a regular basis. Thank you.